Welcome all my lovely goblins and ghouls of the internet. I am Anya, your demonic cinephile. And sorry that I'm now just getting to this video. <laughs> I completely forgot it existed, but if you saw my last upload, you probably know that I haven't been in the best mind space um, in the last few days doing to the pass of Toriyama Sensei and recently the pass of I'm sorry I'm forgetting her name but um the voice actress who did the um, voice for Kiara the demon cat from Inuyasha they got you know, two very amazing Japanese talents um this month and that's just so Freaking tragic, uh, especially two people that I'm so connected to. They're a really part of my childhood. More um, Toriyama Sensei is writing because I don't, I didn't even watch the Japanese version of Inuyasha until way after high school. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> but enough of that. We are not about. Here, that for now, we're here about Interview with a Vampire. We're getting closer and closer to the new season. And it's actually kind of funny because I just finished the audio book for first book. So this makes my, what, my one, two, fifth time reading interview. <laughs> if you're counting audiobooks as reading the book. <laughs> So, hopefully my brain's more refreshed on everything. Probably gonna start my... Start the audiobook for The Vampire Let's Start in a few days or so. Yeah, so this isn't an eclipse or a trailer or anything. This is like, um... An interview with Sam Reed and Jacob Anderson. So this is probably gonna be more fun and silly than anything. Um, to anal analyze and break down, but I'm curious what's going to be, so let's go in and check it out, shall we? I'd like to ask a question. <laughs> the scene. Go. Ask the question. The fan questions. Okay, we've got some of your questions. We really appreciate them, so we're going to try and answer as many as we possibly can. Quick fire. Quick fire. Okay. But his his fight. There, he sounds very similar to Lestat, but Jacob Anderson sounds so different without his um, Louisiana accent. Will Lestat be just as feisty? I mean, yeah. I can answer that. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh come on! What? Don't use that scene. Don't use that scene. Are we getting the stat side of the story this season? Uh, yes, but not from his point of view. The stat okay. Oh, your trunks, you're home. <laughs> He'll be wearing them. So hopefully, uh, I don't think we're going to get a full-on adaption of the vampire the stat. Like I hope we do. I have a I have a strange feeling we're not going to get a, and not going to get it like. I'm about, what am I trying to say? <laughs> like, you know, like, like we're a full on book adaption. But I hope we do. Because. Fuck, what up? My brain just full on dumpster fire. <laughs> uh, the Okay, so the second book, The Vampire Lestat, is all Lestat's backstory. But he gives us a small little breakdown of interview. Like in the last chapter before the epilogue I think it was basically saying that Louis exaggerated everything and was being dramatic and fabricated this and that basically Lestat wasn't as a mean and abrasive that he was in Louis's point of view and I don't think we're gonna do that in the show I wish I wish it was the case but I don't think they're gonna do that <laughs> He'll be wearing the most fabulous outfit of the season. My favorite is Claudia. Yes, Claudia's. Yeah, Claudia has a lot of great outfits so far. What we've seen in the trailer. This shot really. I love this shot so much. Of all the shots in the trailer, this one has stuck with me. 
very well dressed, I say that. Yeah. Our morning was quite a snazzy dresser, too. Yeah. Snazzy Drezza. Snazzy Drezza. Snazzy Drezza, Snazzy Killer. We're getting glimpses of Armand's backstory in season two. Yes. Ooh. We've only heard half the story. We got Killer and Dr. Okay, so... Actually, this is kind of funny. So, while I was listening to the audiobook, Armand actually does give a small little hint of his backstory about growing up in the... Was where, where how he was taken to Italy and was raised by a master and a group of boys, which basically a small preview to his full on backstory that we got more glimpses of in the Vampire of the again than it was fully revealed in his book, The Vampire Armand. So I wonder how much of Armand's backstory will be revealed. Probably not so much, because. I think Armand's backstory could be used for a um, for a full season of his own, or they could do something cool because um, the Vampire Armand was tech is not technically part of the Vampire Chronicles. It's like this weird side series called the Tales of the New Vampires, I think, and that AMC could do like do like um like a movie. So doing like a TV show, they can give Armand a movie. That'd be kind of cool. We heard half the story. We got Killer and Doctor Fareed in season one. Will we get more cameos from other books in season two? Yes. Cool. Now, Killer, I know he's from Queen of the Dam. He is the one of the biker vampires that Kasha offs in Baby Jinx chapter. Now. Dr. Farid. Now, I know he's a character in future books. I just don't, haven't read those books yet, so I'm not sure the his role in the story. Yes. Oh, hey, Doc, did you know there's a flying vampire apocalypse coming your way? <laughs> Will we be getting episodes from people other than Louis' point of view, like we did with Claudia's episode in season one? Why would you want to? You're not my type. I like a full of figure. Stop. She's being a rude. But yes, yes. Can you okay, start? so that can be fun. So Louis' point of view, Claudia's point of view, Armand's point of view, Lestat's point of view, which are probably the only characters we're gonna see. But uh, who are, who are characters we can see? Maybe Daniel. Daniel can get his point of view, like, like. Uh, the original interview from 76. Um, it's probably really it. <laughs> I don't think all the other vampires. Santiago, but Santiago is not going to be with us that much longer. Right for us, any deleted scenes that didn't make it into season one? Yes. There's one bit where I jumped over a balcony like Batman. It was one of the coolest moments oh. of my life, and they didn't yeah. use it. Yeah. That's oh. Awesome. You're always going to be alone. That's why you're always gonna be alone. And then you jumped over the balcony. And I think it was probably just a bit too cool. Oh! <laughs> Come on, that'd be, that'd be neat! What quote? Blue deserves some one cool moments. Most important of season two. Memory is a monster. Yeah. Memory is a monster. Uh, Never forget, it doesn't. I already talked about why I don't really like this change in the last video. But. Like I said, if the narrative is good, I will forgive it from book inaccuracies. And for the rest, you'll just have to wait until season two. Ah, freak. <laughs> <laughs> I love these guys. For the rest, you'll just have to wait until, until season, season two. two. <laughs> Love these two guys. Let's put that back up there. Uh, well, I really do love um, the show. There are a lot. There are some things that I didn't fully like and didn't fully agree with, with them changing from the books. But one thing I would say the show did not get wrong is this casting decision. These guys, their chemistry is fantastic. <laughs> 
the, the smartest decision they ever did was casting these two together. But yeah, that was a, just a quick little fun thing. But so, see, May 12th, coming soon. Wonder if we're gonna have any more clips and trailers. I wondered if season one get this much trailers and things before it came out. Because I can't really remember. Besides the first, besides the two trailers that came before it. Because, um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I didn't really, wasn't, I wasn't feeling season one when the promotions were coming out. I was very, I was very uh, against uh, all the changes. Like, I wasn't feeling the, tra the I wasn't really, I was really feeling the trailers. The trailers I thought were kind of cool, but like, it looks too different from the books. I don't think I'm gonna like it. It looks, it looks kind of shitty. But when I watched the first episode, and I watched, um, I think what pulled me in, one, it was the inter, the how they're using Paul, and how they're using building up Louis, Louis and his connection with his brother, and show that they're actually going to take their time with this. It's not just going to be this throwaway thing, and how his connection with Lestat. I don't know when the. When I said I just sat down to watch it, and it's like okay, this is different from the book, but I I can tell there's actually some care and love put into this. See, that's where I can start to forgive inaccuracies to certain things in source material when you actually care about what you're doing, and that's why I forgive Interview with the Vampire for changing things from the from the books, unlike. Like other shows and movies that change things for no freaking reason, because the people who do the show actually seem like they care about about the books. They actually seem like, okay, we want to we want to do Anne Rice, but we want to do this weird kind of freaky spin on it. It's kind of like um, Marvel Comics in their ultimate in their ultimate books. Ugh, no one's gonna know about the ultimate books. I think I'm the only one who knows and cares about the ultimate books. <laughs> I need to read the ultimate books. I haven't read comics in such a long time. I'm talking about <laughs> I'm going off a different subject. <laughs> well, but Interview with the Vampire. It looks good. It looks kind of new. This is just a dumb fun thing. So, what do you like? It? So, with all these, these questions, what are your um... Actually, now, what are your questions about the upcoming season? Uh, what are your questions about future seasons? Um, my my big question is... Actually, let's go back to video. To Daniel's snarky comment. Where is he? Where, where's our old smartass? And Dr. Fareed in season one, will we get more cameos from other books in season two? Yes. Oh, of course. Hey, Doc, did you know there's a flying vampire apocalypse coming your way? That comment. <laughs> Is that just going to be a dumb, snarky comment? Or are we actually going to get, like, a full-on vampire apocalypse? Like, will the events of Queen of the Dam be very, very different <laughs> with when Akasha comes, when, when Akasha wakes up? Will she actually have, like, a vampire army serving her? Or will it just be more book accurate? I actually think that'd be kind of cool if Akasha has her, like, a little army serving her. But then again, it might, if it changed too much about the character's motivation, eh, like I said, it depends on how they write it. But, I don't know. Up to you. What do you think about that? You want to see a vampire f apocalypse in season, what, five? <laughs> Whenever that happens? Post it in the comments below. I want to hear your opinions. And I will see you all in the next video. Love you guys. And bye bye. Where's the end video? Where's the end? Now, bye bye. <laughs>